in terms of availability. The kits is available technically, but as you know, you know, kits like that need to get a very stringent approval by each government. So Singapore government uh, have a, you know, a provision authorization on May 8th. So the kits now is available for all the hospitals. And we just got a, a similar approval by the EU, European market. And then we're waiting for FDA in USA. In terms of the impact on the ground, so there are many different ways we can use the assay, right? One is so-called immunity passport, you know, so the assay is uh, really to determine the functional antibody. So when you get an infection, you produce hundreds, if not thousands, different antibodies, and around one to 5% are what we call neutralizing antibodies. So these are the most important antibodies. And so this is the kit that we developed to measure that antibody. So in the future, once the vaccine is on the market, this kit will also measure the neutralizing antibody for people who have received the vaccine. So it will have impact in many different layers. Yeah. Okay, so a few questions there then. I mean, can you give us a better idea of the accuracy of this test based on how many people it's been tested on so far? And this question too about even if you test positive for the antibodies, how do we know that you are still immune from the virus? Because there's been some doubts raised on this. How long would that immunity last? Yes, yeah, so again, two questions there. So the first question, accuracy. And we have test thousand samples in Singapore of the what we call the control, healthy controls. So that's to test the specificity. So we don't get any false positives. So that's like a 99 or 100 percent accurate. But in terms of the sensitivity is that if you have uh, confirmed COVID-19 patients, then it depends when you take the blood sample. Because as we know, the antibody takes a while to develop. So if you want to apply the test within the first seven days, then I think uh, it's not going to be very useful because uh, the test is not for rapid and early diagnosis. It's really the, for com confirmation of infection. So if you take the blood 14 to 21 days later, then the accuracy or what we call is the uh, sensitivity goes to 95 to 100 percent. Okay, so that's what uh, the, the first question is. Can you repeat the second question? Yes, just knowing that you are immune once that you've tested positive for this and how long that immunity could last. Okay, so that's another interesting question because uh, we are only in you know, the four months into the outbreak. So we cannot be 100 percent sure say the immunity will last one year or two years or even three years. But we can learn lessons from, for example, SARS patients in Singapore. And we have done that research and it's just published uh, last week. So for SARS patients, you know, we have uh, blood samples stored from 2003, so 17 years ago. And we also recall some of the SARS survivors and take their blood samples 17 years later. And at least for SARS, we found that this protective neutralizing antibodies for 50% of patients, they last as long as 17 years. So that's a good news if COVID-19 behaves like SARS.